Sam. Sam. I just want to put an essay on. And essay will usually relate to something in anatomy in the first half, and the second half relates to something out of a case study. Um, see if you can take this and figure out what's wrong and what would look like and what would be going on in a person. Last year we did uh, the left side heart failure, because that's the most common, the most common reason why it happens is because of hypertension. And usually through lectures we get to this point, I'll hit come over go over diseases and stuff, and I hope you remember them. Because one of these will appear with something on when we get into this stuff on your final. So we did left, so that's definitely not going to be on this final, but it can be anything from when we go with the fetal circulation. So you'd have to trace out the whole fetal cir cir circulation for me when we do that in lecture. And that would be the first part of the question. The second part would be, you know, you know, blue baby syndrome. What could it be? And you'd have to go into detail telling me it could either be the, the foramen ovale thing closed or the pain conductus, and how would you fix it, and what would they do? So it'd be stuck, you know, so it's just to make you think. Yeah, to make you think, did, did you finally learn to take your anatomy and make sense with it? And that's the whole key of the whole down course. If you didn't, then I didn't do a good job of teaching. Because 95% of what we teach at this college are allied health students. They're going into a health field career. So you have to know how to utilize this stuff. Instead of taking it to go into research or biology, no, you're going this direction. So we got to kind of gear it this way. So the first thing I'm going to put up here for you, and we'll do this in lecture again. We won't trace it like this on a board of lecture. I'm going to do it here on my labs. But the point is, we're going to trace a drop of blood from the vena cavus to the aorta. And while you're looking at the hearts, run this thing through your head while you're looking at them to make it make sense. Other than just memorizing thoughts, Think of why it's doing this, where it's going, and what's happening. Okay? Yeah, you shouldn't walk around with a hood on your head to make it. They might also see you like this outside and put a black man taken away. <laughs> Alright, so we have the yeah, start with superior, superior <coughs> inferior being a the coronary sinus. These things are going to all drain into the heart atrium. Okay, they're all going to drain into the right atrium. So we finally entered the right side of my heart. From there, we would go to the right ventricle. And we're going to talk about things we're going to go through to get there. So, one key point is this you always enter the heart to atria, you always leave the heart to ventricles. So that means veins will always bring blood to the heart, arteries always leave it, that never changes, that's a given. Got it? You got that? Makes sense, right? So, this is draining the upper part and the upper extremities, this is draining the lower body below your diaphragm and the lower extremities, this is draining the heart back to itself. Because you gotta remember, you gotta feed the pump first. Don't put gasoline in the motor, the pump's not gonna work. So we gotta feed the pump first from the hot to pump. So the coronary veins are trained to this, the coronary eyes would come out and feed the, and feed the actual. There's no chair, but you can still the chair. So the coronary eyes would actually feed the hot. Okay? So. What are we going to pass through? So we're going to know this is an atrioventricular valve. And all that means is it's a valve or a doorway separating the atrium from the ventricle. Kind of like those gates separating the lab from the hallway. Simple as that. And we named the gate. So we're going to name the gate. This gate would be the tricuspid because it's got three cusps. So the tricuspid atrioventricular valve. That's the valve you would go through to get into your right ventricle. So, where do we go from here? Well, this right ventricle is going to push the blood out, and it's going to push it into a pulmonary trunk. And it's going to go through what we call a semi 
Luna valve. And it's going to go into a valve known as trunk. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So why am I writing this in blue versus red? Because those are oxygenated. No. 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 Reverse. <laughs> then reverse. Reverse. So at this point, from here we go into two pulmonary arteries. And this would be very low in oxygen. And from here we go to the lung. Okay? So now we're going to switch from blue to red. And why am I doing that? Watch it doesn't work. Right. What'd you do? I saw you licking it. It's <laughs> oh. So now what we got to go for? Four. Pulmonary. Veins. And now you notice the oxygen levels are high. Why? Too much just came from the lungs. Just came from the lungs, exactly. Too much water. Too much oxygen. Not too much, just, just right. It's like the baby. Baby, that was this one. This was just right. Okay, so here we go. So where do we end up now from this? The what? Atrium? That'd be good. Atrium. Entering to the microphone. And we'll yeah. jump ahead, David. Right. To the left ventricle. Right. We've got to keep this symmetrical so it makes sense to you. So again, we've got a valve between two chambers. So it's an atrioventricular valve again. And this valve will be now bicuspid. We'll write that first, which is also known as mitral, as its other name. Bicuspid. So how do you remember this stuff? Well, you try. Or you buy. Because the try is on the right and the buy is on the left. So you try something before you buy it. They used to go from try them for a while, now she's going to buy them. So that's consumer. Let's see how it's wrong. There we go again. So from this left ventricle, where are we finally going? Aorta. And again, we're going to go to a semi lunar valve, aortic. known as, as David says, aortic valve. And eventually we go here and we stop all over again. Okay? Now, looking at this, we use different colors. If I go from here to here, this would be known as. And if we go from here to here, this is known as so. In one quick lesson, we didn't only trace a drop of blood, we, we learned two circulatory moves. We learned one side pumping to the lungs, one side pumps to the body. So why is it so common to see a lot of left ventricular problems in a person? Well, because most people do have high blood pressure, diabetic problems. So it's going to pump out the body. There's a lot more stress on this ventricle, so this ventricle will hypertrophy itself. So you get what they call cardiomegaly, or left side of pathological cardiomegaly. Now athletes get cardiomegaly, but it's a good cardiomegaly due to exercise. And as soon as they calm down their exercise level, the heart will go back to shape without damaging itself. But somebody with hypertensive problems, diabetic problems, where there's always a force that's bumping against, they would come down with pathological problem. That's you can remember this is an important organ for you people to learn going into nursing, going towards healthcare. Still the number one killer in this country is what? This disease. Stroke and cardiac disease, over cancers, over everything else. It's still the number one killer. 
remember that. So it's an important organ to learn. It's nothing but a four-chambered pump. Two receiving chambers, two pumping chambers. And the two pumping chambers will be the atrium's beat together, the ventricles beat together. Makes sense. So you're pushing to the lungs and the body at the same time, you're pushing blood into both ventricles at the same time. So with that, you hear this term called a murmur. What's a murmur? That's a you want to know. Murmur, murmur. What is a murmur? Is that a regular beat? Yeah. 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 All right, this one doesn't beat. It's a regular beat. It doesn't beat together. It doesn't hole. beat together. <laughs> a hole in the heart. Oh, it doesn't actually, because I think that's my go head. Doesn't it get um, stuck in one of those? It can, if you ask the doses. So I get all these different answers. And indirectly, all correct. But yes. the true definition of a murmur is a high volume, a high volume of fluid being passed through a small opening. It makes a sound. A high volume of fluid being passed through a small opening makes a sound. And what's the sound like? Gagging. Not gagging. <laughs> it, like it sounds like water. It's like a hissing, right? Mm -hmm. Like a, like a sound. So you hear it. So instead of hearing the normal hot sounds of what? No. Dub. So instead of hearing love dub, I might hear love sh, love sh, love sh, love sh, love sh. So what would that mean, love sh, dub? If I have a whole systolic murmur throughout all our system. If I have love sh, dub, then I have a paras, pan, parasystolic murmur. It's not taking up all of my system. So depending on, so when you do true cardiology, you not only learn to recognize that I hear a murmur, where is it? What valve is it in? Is it systolic? Is it diastolic? That will tell you, is it regurgitation versus stenosis? Now, who mentioned the hole? No, she did. Well, the hole would be because this valve won't open all the way. And you hear it. The one that would create more arrhythmic problems would be the regurgitation time. Because what's happening, it's, every time the ventricle beats, instead of blowing the blood safe into my aorta, I'm blowing you back, half of it back into my left, my left, uh, my left atrium, which is going to create an extra beat in the atrium to push it back out. That's called these cause these arrhythmias, so these arrhythmic heart beats. But that's what goes on with murmurs. So you have two types, regurgitation, stenosis. Stenosis means it won't open. It's calcified, something damaged it. Probably bacteria, damaged this. You had a chronic strep, no one picked it up. Here you are in your 40s now with a significant problem. Or stenosis. Somehow you damaged the wall of the ventricles, damaged my papillary muscles, so my valve won't stay closed. So when it beats, it blows back, blows blood back out through the atrium and the vent and the aorta at the same time or on the other side. So the most common room you always hear about is this guy here in this one. This is only singled out. That's the one. Most likely because a lot more stress is thrown on that valve every time the left ventricle beats. Left ventricle is much thicker and stronger than the right. So when that thing is hitting, and when you look inside these knots, I mean, you're literally looking, when we look at the real knots, it's as thin as paper, these knots. It's the same thing in us. So it's like, wow, and this thing can take all this much abuse? I mean, it's literally a valve. I mean, you think about this left ventricle blowing blood out into this aorta. The impact that's hitting the aortic wall is over 200 mile an hour force, constantly. Think about that. 200 mile an hour force hitting that thing at 60 times a minute. That you better walk. Show me material that can be built that can take that force like our body can. So when you think about it, the material that's used in us, connective tissues, elastic connective tissues, and, and smooth muscle tissues, and all this stuff, so much more resilient than what's put in an automobile, a plane, under the force that they normally have, they wear out. This takes what? It can take up to 100 years to wear it out. Something else might take you. Alzheimer's. I can't. I nothing to do with my heart. Heart was fine. 
So it's, it's a magnificent pump that no other pump in the world can equal this pump. When you think about it, a pump that doesn't wear out. Now today you have these five brand new spanking huts. The ones that are on the ground are brand new. These are the two older ones. These are brand new and you don't want to have one. And these are just to help you when you're looking at real hot today. So what we're going to do today is go over the plastic hot before I let you start looking at real hots. So you get an idea of what you have to do today. Today's mainly just the hot. Now the plugs are there. Look at the plug, fine. The hot is the same in there. But look at the external structure as it is on the one you're holding your hand. Look at it. So we get hots cut spirally, kind of like this, versus just coronal cuts. Because you really can't do true coronal cut to a hot and see everything at once. So you have to spiral the cut. And the videos that are on um, the one that's the cadaver dissection of Blackboard on the web links, she does a great, that same woman with the bare hands, she does a great job of showing you, taking the human heart out of the chest and showing it to you how to cut into it. It is cool. And she shows you the long of the heart. So she does a good job of showing you all this stuff. And if, if you look at it, you really get a feel. In your textbook, if you go to your, um, uh, sent the pots there for, uh, what do I call it? This is one of your, on the right, you click on it, where you can get into other things to do with your work activities. Under there, they would have dissection. You go in and it has three of, of the sheep pot. It shows you external, internal, cutting one side, cutting the other side. It shows you all, and she does a good job. She starts with a whole lot. And what happens when they say, okay, we're going to show you uh, cord and tendon Almost this all turns purple in the picture, you'll see what you're going to see. And then it goes back to the real hot. So they do a great job of showing you everything, even on your videos that come on Mastering a &P. So you do have a lot of access to look at things, if we so choose to, right? If we so choose yeah. to, to learn. Or if we choose not to. You know, when you get a 65, don't say, oh, what can I do? Great. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean, but you know, you're at this point of the course and your average is 65 because you've you know, historically scored that right along, you don't know in heck you're getting an A in the course. Most likely a C if you want. You, you follow what I'm saying to you, so it's like it's starting to become too little, too late for you. Not to pass it, but not to get an A or a B to go into nursing. So maybe you should look at another career go become an English or a history teacher. Because science isn't a thing. Or go become an accountant and make ten times what doctors make. The business world makes much more money than the medical world today. It didn't years ago, but today it doesn't. I was in school no, that was in the top fields. You know, you go into these other fields that, you know, if you're money driven, this isn't always the field to go to today. Too much regulation on it. You go to fields with no regulation at all. And doesn't, you know, sometimes you may have a desire to be something, but you don't have the in you to do the sciences. So what I'm trying to get across to you, it doesn't mean you're not smart enough to go to a cut. No. I could never be a foreign language teacher. I'd have had a 2.0 cube if I was lucky if I majored in that stuff. Majoring in science gave me over a 3 cube Because this is what I liked, this is what I was good at. And that's the point. Don't force yourself into something you may not really want, want to be. Even if you're working as a CNA, it doesn't mean you can be a nurse. You're taking a whole different level of education. And it's a significant point you've got to consider. So what I'm trying to get across, stop beating yourselves up. There's other careers that are just as rewarding you can do. All right? And that's, I'm trying to de-stress you people. Because you people look at it, if I can't be a nurse, it's the end of the world. I can't, it's not. All right? So stop doing that to yourselves. It's not. It's nothing worse than going to a career, and then you're there for a while saying, why did I do this? Because I really don't like it. 
I, I got sick of healthcare right away. Fall well in school. When I got the internship, I was like, ooh, I hate this. I was good at it. And with, with the kind of stage you trapped in it because financially you kind of had to because of the debt you had, and all you want to pay it off is staying in those fields. And was good at it, liked it, didn't love it. So they ask, why, do you, why are you doing this stuff to that? Because this I love. This is enjoyable. You people drive me nuts every day, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's nice to meet students. See students make it to that next level. And the most rewarding thing is people is like on May 20th when I go to graduation, seeing students of mine walking across that stage as our friends. And then they come up to you after this, oh, I remember when I had you and I, I was giving up and you gave me a kick in the ass to keep pushing me, and I did it. That's rewarding. Then I look at it this way, someday I'll be laying in the hospital bed and one of you clowns are going to be standing over me. And now I know if I'm doomed or I'm going to live. At least he's an option. Listen, I'm not an ass. Uh, then I'm really screwed. Yeah. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so, now let's go to our heart. And if, I, if it's like this, Tina, why is this a female? How can you tell it's female when you look at the walls? It's oh, it's broken. It's broken. <laughs> there you go. See, if, it's cold, if, if it doesn't exist at all, if the tray looks like this, it's a male. If the looks like this, it's a female. David broke her heart. So, Notice how David just dragged right, his heart. Right, Mike? Mike's a quiet guy, so he can't do that. So, when we look at the heart from the outside, there's different ways to visualize what's the easiest way to identify where, where, how am I looking at this heart. Am I looking at it from the back, from the front? And the key thing is the base of the heart is up here, and the apex is down here. Which is weird. The organ kind of sits upside down. You're thinking the apex is the top of a building and the base is its foundation. So it kind of sits upside down in our chest. And we, when, they, when you hear the term levo alevo dextrose, meaning it's levo alevo, levocardia, meaning it's sitting on a left angle. Not dextrocardia. Dextrocardia means the heart would favor too much to the right side of the chest and it's not kind of where it's the way we're used to seeing it. So, so it's almost like this ventricle here, parts of the left and the right, lay right on top of your diaphragm, right around the fifth and the cost of space. So you go to the diaphragm and get rid of something, right? The fifth and the cost of space, because you go right through the, right through the ventricles in 30 seconds, all the blood's going. That acts like David did that a few times. <laughs> Like it or not, he has to. Okay, so here we go. So we look at some key things, and the key thing I always find is you look for the pulmonary trunk is always going to be an anterior vessel. So we'll see when we look at the heart, we have this ridge, this gully rather, or sulcus. So this would be known as my interventricular sulcus. And in there would be where the coronary vessels would be that are going to feed the heart and take one away from the heart. And if we use this as my dividing line, so that means that would be my left ventricle, which would contain the apex, and this is my right ventricle. If we come straight up from it, this would be your left oracle and atria. Oracle is the outside surface, atria is the room inside. And this would be my right oracle and atria. So those are the basic parts of the heart. We come here, we pump up this way, we're going to push through the pulmonary trunk, which is then going to give branches of pulmonary artery. Then we have the water coming off my left ventricle, giving the aortic arch. Way in the posterior, the superior vena cava, and from the undersurface, the inferior vena cava. And these red structures here would be the venous structure, pulmonary veins, the blue of the pulmonary arteries, returning blood back and forth from the heart. Also, there's another key feature right here on it, this little white thing that you don't see too well, which was once the doctor's Arteriosis. Could you hold that just so I can zoom in? 
Can you see it? There we go. There you go. There we go. Okay. So. Everybody hold their up. Number 12. I want to make a toast. No. <laughs> okay. I'll help you next semester, David. Okay. Not this time. <laughs> but, so, also, that ductus arteriosus was a bypass rule for fetal circulation. When you're going to learn we do fetal circulation, does the fetus use its lungs? No, it doesn't need them. It's getting oxygen from mom. And the point is, we got to get this thing as fast as we can and get to the brain to get the oxygen and nutrition the brain needs to grow in the rest of the body. So this is why we have these bypass rules. And upon birth, that would close, and then it now becomes a ligamentum arteriosus. So now this thing is now the ligamentum arteriosus, which is a remnant of fetal circulation. And you'll see that, okay? And it would be known as a, the blue baby of Peyton Ductus. This thing didn't close. So my blood, instead of going to my lungs, after it's going out to the body on the baby. The baby's in trouble. Okay? So we look at our aortic arch, and on the aortic arch, we have three major vessels leaving it. Now, the first thing that's going to ever leave the aorta, it's just rooting above the heart, I'm going to be a coronary artery. So the first true branch of the aorta is the coronaries. The first visible branch would be your brachiocephalus. Hear what I'm saying to you. So the first visible branch of the aorta is the brachiocephalus. The first true branch that you're really not seeing because it's buried down in the heart would be the coronaries. So if you get tested on that on your last test, Pay attention to the way it's being asked. No, I won't make it true or false. You'll be listening. But pay attention, David. He wants to get it right. Maybe. Now we go here. So here's my brachiocephalus. So the, le the next one would be the left common carotid, the left subclavian. Now the brachiocephalus, as it comes up and gives rise and continues on, it would then give the right common carotid and right subclavian, and that we'll get into that in detail next week when we do circulation, right? So it's not that difficult, it's just a road map. When you look at the cats next week and see their hop, they don't have a left common carotid coming off the arch, it comes off the brachiocephalic. So their brachiocephalic comes up and gives off three branches, and the only thing they're going to have is two major branches leaving their aorta known as, as the brachiocephalus and left subclavian. So there's a variation between us and the cat. And those variations are good to know because they also can be asked on the test to see if you pay attention over here. Right? They would agree with that. So if we open our heart up, and now we know we came the female heart again. For those who, you don't know, it might be a bonus question. I'll lay in there. What's the gender? <laughs> or have something empty. What's the gender of what this heart should have been? So we look at it now, and we had the original, we had the sulcus on the outside. Now it becomes a wall, which would be septum, so interventricular septum. Then we have myocardium here. And, this, and the septum is made of myocardium. Because on the top, this would be pectinate muscle, not myocardium. It's more pectinate. It's different muscle. You don't need as much force as let blood drain down into your ventricles. You could pull it out to the bottom. So when we look at this thing, so we know this would be my, my right atrium, my right ventricle. We notice inside we have the coronary sinus. Coronary sinus. And I have this other little window here. It's like has a shade in there. All looks like what it really looks like is a belly button inside your heart. Okay. So it's the heart's belly button. But it's also known as fossa ovalis, which once was foramen ovalis. So what? What? What, what was the purpose of the foramen ovalis? Babies, right? Babies. 
All right, so what it meant is when blood came from the body, you know, from the vena cava and went into the right atria, why did this and not in the left atria? So you have two bypass routes in the heart to bypass the blood. And the remnant now becomes fossil and bypass. And most of them are broken because people are going to keep putting their finger and they push it through the belly button. But there is a newer cut heart, so you kind of can see it nice on the heart. So those things you can easily visualize on the heart, the sinus and the fossil ovalis if you look for them. And they're going to sit right below the vena cava because it makes sense. That blood's coming right in. Let's get it over there. Let's get it over there as fast as we can so we can get oxygen to the brain. So those are the two key things you look for in your right age. Then we see we have a valve. Well, this would be my, it doesn't even look like anything, you've got a ring with strings on it. But this would be my tricuspid. And it has these little spaghetti strings known as corda tendine. And then we have a bump here known as papillary muscle. So the corda tendine pulls to the papillary muscle. Now, are you, do you think they're there to open the valve? Close the valve? What are they there for? Hang on to it so it won't go into oh, the yeah. atrium, right? She's Keep it tight. Yeah, say it again, because you're right. It's just to hang on to right. the valve. So, so it don't blow open the other direction, exactly. So when your ventricles beat, the papillaries lock up and grab the corda tendine and hold this valve closed so it doesn't blow out in the opposite direction. So notice what I said before, someone suffered maybe a heart attack, damaged the wall, and in that wall is the papillary muscle not working as efficiently. So is it common that someone who suffered a decent MI could come down with, with a mitral regurgitation? The answer is yes. I said it died, it's not good. Eventually. So is that say like within five years, the survival is like a 50% chance of dying after a heart attack, depending on where it is. So if that lets go, if that I, I, what? if that lets go, like what happened? The heart just like blows up? No, it won't blow up, but you need to have a valve replacement like ASAP. No, not, can the heart explode kind of put enough adrenaline to do? Okay. It'll blow itself. It'll probably blow out to the top. There's too much force. Let go. If we have damage or an aneurysm, yeah, yeah. But, so then we have these ridges, and they're easy to see on this wall. And both vegetables have the same thing. You realize the only thing that changes names are the valves. But well, both ventricles will contain papillary muscle, corda tendine, and trabecular cane, which are the ridges in the meat. Cane's meat, trabecular cane. And the reason we have these ridges, they're formed by the rooting of the papillary muscles, but also the ridges create turbulence in the blood to not only let the blood just shoot out in a gush, but spiral its way out like it does down the barrel of the down the barrel. You spiral it so it comes out with much more force, travel much further, compared to letting it come out like this versus this. It's like putting the nozzle on the hose. Is the ridge is in a gun barrel? What? The ridge is in a gun barrel? The ridge is in the gun barrel, exactly. <laughs> so then from, from here, <laughs> We go to the other side. <laughs> so we leave the heart. What do we leave for you to get out of this ventricle? There we go. So right here with my pulmonary valve. Pulmonary valve. We go to the pulmonary trunk, pulmonary artery, lung, come back to the pulmonary veins, and, and there's the left atrium. So we come into the left atrium. Okay? From the left atrium, we would pass through the mitral or bicuspid valve into the left ventricle. And right here, we'd have the same thing. What a tendine, papillary muscle, trabecular cane. It's the same. And then we're going to leave this ventricle through aortic valve and go into the aorta into the, around the body. 
And that's the whole thing on the hop. Looks like a lot, and you start doing it, and you realize it's probably one of the easy things you're gonna learn. Now there's two handouts today. The other handout today is a, drawn like a square board. And what it is, it's showing you a, a, a tour to design that about a year and a half, about two years ago, and he's over, he's at the um, University of Colorado, the University of Utah, in pre-med, getting ready to go to medical school now. And he was a two-year age to help me, Christopher was his name. And he came up with that scheme to make it easier for his students that he used to tutor, and they found that thing helped them to trace the blood through the heart. So you got both ways, that way, that way. So I give you both. So he designed it, I saved it, I never got rid of it. Scanned it to my computer and kept it. And printed out every semester for students to help them out. Okay? So yes, we can be mean, but we can try to help you at the same time as we can. Yeah? And that's about Now, if you really want a hot, you can go to a butcher and buy pig hots. And just take them, open them up, and then soak them in alcohol. Yes. Then get alcohol, put them in there, let them sit there, and store them in there. Get a big jar, put it in with the alcohol, cover them over, and they'll stay fresh. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. Al this is an alcohol-based product we're using. So, yeah, fish tank have the hots all floating around. Yeah, yes. come, I don't know Tina really lost it when they yeah. come over some hots. It doesn't say zombie apocalypse at all. Yours will be red, though. They won't be this pale color. They'll be nice pinkish red color. Then they'll turn to this as they sit there. So when you look at this hot, we can see right here my sulcus. And we know within that sulcus there would be blood vessels. But you're not going to see it because of so much pericardial fat. So that means this would be my left ventricle, this is my right. There's my apex. We come up straight, there's the auricle with the atrium side on the left. Come to the back, there's the auricle and atria on the right. Now we come up from my right uh, ventricle and I'm in, now I'm in my pulmonary trunk. In the back, this circle here would be the aorta, and this is the brachiocephalic. So there's your aorta, there's your brachiocephalic. Keep coming posterior, superior vena cava. Inferior would be coming in over here, but it's kind of cut away. 
you don't see really the, this is the opening where the pulmonary veins would have entered, but they're not here. So what's missing on this heart is your ligamentum arteriosum because they, they've chopped it too short. Okay, so you really can't see it. But there would be a, a piece of tissue connecting these two to one another that I could hold this up by, and that would be the ligamentum arteriosum, what that thing is right there. Okay, so now let's go inside. So we're going to open up our right side. Now notice the thickness of the right wall to the left. Hmm. Big difference. Much more strength coming out of this side of the heart than this side. So we roll this thing all the way around. We totally open our heart right up, just like that. So when we look at this, right here would be my delineation line between the atria and the ventricle. So there's your right atria, right ventricle. So we know that's the valve structure. If I come up further, right here is this hole, and that's my coronary sinus, and the hole right above it looks like a belly button, that's the fossa ovalis. So if you pop through that, you're into the other atria. All right, so there's your fossa ovalis, there's your coronary sinus. And where is that cutoff point, divider point rather? Right here. See the difference in the tissue? Right. This is smooth, this is ridged. Then, here's my valve line, right here. So here's your leaflets. So here's your tricuspid, one, two, and the third one should be, third leaflet is here. So one, two, and three. So these leaflets I'm lifting up will be tricuspid valves. See how thin they are? It's hard to believe what they can do. Look how thin that is, like paper. The little strings are the cord tendine, and the bumps are the papillary muscles. These ridges you're seeing in the wall are your trabecular carne. This thing you're seeing here is the moderator band, which would bring electrical impulses to this outside ventricular wall. That's what it's there for, the moderator band. It's only on the right, not the left. Then we're going to leave. So we entered this way, we're going to leave the heart. So now we're coming up this way, and we're getting into the pulmonary trunk, and if I open it up, and we get a little valve leaflet here, there's your pulmonary valve, that little piece of tissue I'm lifting up. Not much to it, but it has so much function. So we go through our pulmonary trunk, pulmonary arteries, lungs. Now we're going to come back to the heart through pulmonary veins, which would be entering through here on this top of this uh, left atria. So let's open it up. So let's open the guy up in the same setup. The atria up here, ventricles down here. Left atria, left ventricle. Here's my line. So this means this valve right here that I'm poking these valves would be my bicuspid or mitral. Papillary muscle, one, two. Two valves, two papillary muscles. Right here, again, cord tendine, trabecular carne, the ridges. So now I'm going to leave this heart through my aorta, and this leaflet right here that's dangling is the leaflet of the aortic valve. Now, if we go on this side of the heart, it does a better job, a coronal cut does a better job of showing the ventricles. So on this, I'm seeing my left ventricle versus my right. There you go. There's a little piece of model. Look at the difference in the thickness of the wall. This is the septum. This wall right here is the septum. It's made of myocardium also. So this would be my left atria. No, atria. Left ventricle. So again, this would be mitral valve. But I want you to realize, look how close they touch one another, the, the uh, mitral and the aorta. And pulmonary and tricuspid is about an inch window between them. They don't touch one another by the way the heart shapes itself. So again, papillary muscle, trabecular carne, the ridges, and here's the leaflets right here of the aortic valve. So here's my aorta. The key is when you look inside an aorta, see this hole that's in there? See that hole right there? Mm -hmm. That hole is an opening to the coronary artery. So you'd have one on each side. And what I'm coming through right now is a coronary artery right there. See that vessel? That's a coronary artery. 
so you actually can see it nice. It was cut it out on this hot so you can see it. And this would come around, so this would be going towards the right. So that'd be the right coronary. You never left going out the other way. They make the circumflex and you drop the anterior and the posterior and then they circumflex at the bottom. And that's how they, they work. Just like that. So right here would be pretty much the front of your heart. You cut it down this way. See what they did. So again, you can see the get selfies, left, right, and up here you're seeing a little piece, I mean, not seeing it at all, a little fringe of what would be left of its atrium. But there you go. So there's your apex, so you can actually figure out. So if you know one heart, you know all the hearts. It doesn't vary. Variations mean there's pathologies. Okay? So that's it. You got it? All right, print. So Wrap, wrap, so print, when, let's when, go. When, one question. So when That's my a hot, yes. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> well, when my husband had his leads put in, one went in that side, one went in this side. For his pacemaker. pacemaker. All right, so the pacemaker, you really can't see the electrical of a heart. Okay. But you know it's there. So we'd have to put one lead here. Okay. Into the atria, one lead here into the ventricular wall to, to hit the, head the head bundle head. of his. And the, the left and right bundle branches to the bundle of his and they become the Kinji fibers. The only reason we need these is because the heart beats on its own, but we gotta keep it in rhythm. Right. Your SA node and AV node somehow went out of sync. So one lead goes to the SA, one lead goes to the AV. Okay. And by doing that, you keep them in sync. Because they go both fire it whatever they set it at, 60 beats, 70 yeah. beats, they'll fire it. He's young that the face makes. It's 52. Mm -hmm. And just soak it in alcohol. Get a big bottle of alcohol, soak it in it, just let it sit in it. So you fill the container with alcohol, put the hot in it. Do you have to take the alcohol out? No. Absolutely. You want to put it in Right now. There's the left ventricle. So when it, there it is. Okay, it's okay if you did it. Okay, now we're all gonna... It's kind of like stewy looking. Right here, like the seal. We're running out of time. Why? Battery. Oh. Oh, I thought... Let's get it out. Let's get it out. Okay, let's do the respiratory stuff first. So here's my left lung, here's your right lung trachea coming down, okay? So with the heart, here's the pulmonary trunk, and again, here's your ligamentum arteriosum, aortic arch. Key thing, pulmonary trunk's gonna become pulmonary artery, and right between the pulmonary artery and pulmonary vein is the primary bronchi. And here's your pulmonary vein. So here's the artery, there's the vein, okay? Here's your diaphragm. Here's the central insertion, central tendon, and here's the muscle part of it, okay? All skeletal muscle. This is held on by the inferior vena cava. This is all inferior vena cava. Here's your superior vena cava. We come inside it, and now we're inside the heart, okay? So looking at the heart, this heart sitting right in front of you. Here's your sulcus, so left and right ventricles. And if you push, it's probably fluid in there. Hear it? Yeah. It was coming See? up. <laughs> and again, here's the here's the the aorta, brachiocephalic, and in the back again, superior vena cava. So this is right ventricle, right atrial oracle, left ventricle, left atrial oracle, and those are all your parts, just like there, because you're only gonna do external. Oh, got it. Got it. So and the test is going to be on one, two, and three. That's going to be I'll have two of these. Uh, one, one pushing more of respiratory, one pushing hot, and a couple of hots out. Not this. I might have that because look at this. Yeah. The vascular is nice on here because I can make you do on here again. Pulmonary vein, veins, pulmonary artery, brachiocephalic, left common carotid, left subclavian, superior vena cava. You can't see that. Uh, you know, on your uh, yeah. on these.